My name is Gary Butterfield. My name's Cole Ross. You know thing to, to watch out for fireball shorts? <laughs> shorts. 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 Yeah. Shorts. From W. In the duck. Yeah, the duck. <laughs> what if we asked you a question? Bong. <laughs> The, um, anywho. Anyway, it's, yeah. been, it's been a while. It's been a while since I've listened to that show, and it's been a while since we've dunked on it. Yeah, I, I don't, I haven't listened to it since I listened to it. Like, it's been like five years, but yeah. the sins are burned in my brain. <laughs> um, uh, what are we talking about this time, Gary? Well, we're talking for this episode of Duck Feed Presents. So, hey, patrons. Here's the thing about Duck Feed Presents, Cole. Yeah. Now that I've been posting a bunch of stuff to it. Mm hmm. Let it all fucking hang out, dude. Okay. Yeah, like it, like like loosen up. Like if you're wearing a belt, stop. Okay. No, I'm... it's not. That's not the kind of vibe that happens mm. in Duck Feed Presents. You can do whatever no. you want. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah. Like Pocket's gonna be an asshole during this, and I'm gonna yell at him, and we're just gonna keep it in. Okay. Because it, it's Duck Feed Presents, man. Yeah. Presents, dog. Um, we're talking about Thief Simulator. Yeah. Uh, this is a game that I didn't know about. Uh, but you hipped me to it. Uh, I think around the time we started talking about the patreon restructure this was like the model for oh we could just do like a duck feed presents about this mm -hmm. yeah. rather than doing a full watch out for fireballs even though like we can do a watch out for fireballs about it it's difficult to find information yes about it um but it is a legit like it is one of my favorite games that came out last year and with no sense of irony right um it is and it's also that experience of having a game that you wish for <laughs> for a really long time and having someone make it yes like i've wanted this for years i mean a while ago you talked about mankind divided uh the deus ex game not so much in like glowing terms about the thing itself but you said it is one of the best apartment break-in simulators mm -hmm. that, that that exists yep and this is just a game about that yeah <laughs> you uh you break in houses and how has this taken so long to happen like there's there's like the game thief where you break yes. into castles and shit. But, but that's also about, like, church the, the robots. The ancient war behind yeah, <laughs> yeah. between the church war robots and the nature weirdos. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, like, it's so crazy this hasn't been done. Yeah, I know, right? There are so many games about crime. You know, crime is a, is, is a whole genre. Mm -hmm. uh, but, like, this is weirdly, and something that sticks out about it to me is that this is a completely nonviolent game. Like, told, yes, yeah. you, you are completely eviscerating people's uh, peace of mind by, in, yeah. by, by invading their space. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Um, it, yeah, it is, it is nonviolent. It's also story agnostic. Yes. Like, there, there is a story to this, but it's not um, like a thief game or another game in which you steal things. Is always going to be tied to you know the the church robots versus the the nature weirdos. Yeah, this just isn't. It just takes the activity and puts it by itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, that activity that is so fun in so many games now is center stage. Yeah, and uh, so we, we'll get into it. But just in terms of like kind of an overview, because I want people to listen to this and buy Thief Simulator. Yes, because I want this guy to make. I want them to keep updating it. Stuff. Me too, because that is that is another thing about this. And people who know the blank simulator games know that this is generally how it goes. This is unfinished. Yes. Um, you know, not in a sense that it's janky. In fact, I would not like this nearly as much if it wasn't, uh, if, yeah. if it was less janky. Um, yeah, not, no. not to say it isn't janky. It's yeah, very janky. Yeah, it's very janky, and I like it because it is janky. That that, that, yes. that is what I'm attempting to say. But no, they're just, like, features that don't go anywhere, and when you look up or do, you know, just a general search, people will say, like, oh, you should be able to sell the cars you scrapped at, like, an auto dealer. And the developer says, ooh, that's a good idea. We'll put that in. <laughs> yeah. Yep. There's a lot of cool things that are planned for it, which we'll talk about kind of after we explain what the game itself is. Yeah. Um, but what the thing is, I, I do want people to buy this, but don't think that this is an extremely like, I mean, I guess this dovetails into your point. Don't think this is extremely polished. Like it is not imagine if the people behind Mankind Divided just made a, a apartment breaking simulator no. with all of those considerations <laughs> and AI right. and kind of robustness. It's not that it's a much more modest product imagine um, the people behind house flipper decided to <laughs> yeah. decided to make a thief game 
Yep, very very similar to that kind of level of production value. Right. Um, but it still works. Like oh, it's yeah. a weird thing where like it ends up still being extremely fun, mm -hmm. while also being a shadow of what it could be. Right. And I really I do want like a big studio. I want this studio to do more stuff with this and mm -hmm. release expansions and sequels. And I want a big studio to be like, why have we never fucking done that? Like <laughs> right. we simulate every other kind of crime. What is more noble about Grand Theft Auto's like uh, Nico Bellic <laughs> murdering thousands of people because he has war PTSD? How is that more noble than just being your own character stealing stuff? Right. <laughs> you know, like it's it's not the crime aversion to this. It's that the idea that having that kind of like backstory and overarching plot contextualizes crime to make it okay in a weird way that it kind of doesn't because right. those games also end up being kind of playgrounds, but not nearly as fun or as expressive as, as thief simulator ends up being. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, what I would like to see them do is expand some of the uh, kind of business running elements of this, you know, oh, yeah. because you do Thieves guild simulator. Yeah. Thieves guild simulator. Like I want to hire, I want to hire some dudes. I want to have upkeep. Yep. I want to have, a, <laughs> I want to have a motivation to go steal and make as much money as I can because there's overhead. Do you right? know the motivation that they're putting into it? Um, yes, it is that. Yeah. Oh no. I, well, I, let's, no let's, sorry. Yeah. Let's yeah. talk about that later. Let's, we had to, we haven't explained what the thing is. <laughs> right. this is. This is what happens when we, we, we free ball it. Yeah. So, and we just feel comfortable free balling around you because you're patrons. <laughs> right. Um, but so, so we will get into kind of explain this is, I, I imagine most people know what this is though. At the very least, like I imagine, you know, this is patrons. So it's the people who are like fans. I imagine they follow me on Twitter and I wouldn't shut mm -hmm. up about this for like a couple months. Right. You know, so they at least know a little bit about it, but let's, yeah. let's do some basics and then we can start talking about like what ifs and what they're going to do in the future yeah. and wish lists and things like that. Yeah. So thief is pretty broad, right? Yep. You know, you could, it could be, you know, like mugging somebody like that, essentially thieving, stealing from somebody. This mm -hmm. is more like burglary or breaking and entering simulator. Yeah. B and E's baby. Yep. <laughs> um, yep. And it is, uh, so in, in just uh, absolute brass tacks, it came out last year, or it came out, I'm sorry, in 2018. Yes. Uh, last year, in, in November 9th, um, by, and developed by Noble Muffins. Yes. Um, Noble Muffins has done a couple other uh, sim games. They've done a car mechanic simulator, which makes a lot of sense because that engine is in this. Mm -hmm. uh, contained L within literally, this. literally that engine. <laughs> yeah, that engine. <laughs> and then all the engines that you steal yeah. are literally in this. Um, and then, uh, they did two things called, uh, it was uh, like build demolish and destroy or demolish mm. and rebuild. Yeah. Demolish and build 2017 and 2018, which looks fucking awesome. Yeah. There, there's the sound. It's like, <laughs> this is the kind of soundtrack. It's like fucking kids on site all grown up, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like those adults on site yeah. is what this is. Dudes on um, site. And you, you play, you know, you play as a crane and a bulldozer and shit like that. Well, you destroy and, buildings. and sometimes as a man with a sledgehammer, uh, I'm looking yep. at him bash up a, a, a statue of a lion. I assume yes. that it is about to turn into a real lion and maul some people. Fuck that lion. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is, yeah, this looks awesome. So yeah. you, you demolish buildings and you construct buildings. Like yes. you do a little, you know, Fallout 4 style base building. Yeah. They make, make houses. And this does have the management aspect. Like you do have overhead and you take jobs and shit. Nice. Looks like I'm going to play this game. Who? Um, um, I might not wait for this to go on sale, Gary. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a, it, it looks good. So they've made that. Um, and it is a game that is a very, very bare bones story about being an ex-con who is a thief who is nameless mm -hmm. who, but who uh, looks like J jason statham you do look like jason statham mixed with jesse pinkman yeah, yeah a little bit uh, yeah. me. and you uh you get out of jail and you owe some mobsters for getting you out of jail yeah you you owe some cartoon movie stereotype mobsters hey. money <laughs> the, the, oh. your, your, your main your main contact is Vinny. yeah uh, some italian americans got your number yep um, so you owe Vinny and he's just going to give you a series of jobs all the while you play into this loop where you steal things, sell them, buy equipment to be better at stealing things and then in turn selling them. Yes. Um, uh, you're also he, gaining experience so you can get new skills. Uh, yes. but that is primarily working up a very limited tech tree. So like you start out w being unable to open locks, you can just kind of like hit windows with crowbars to get in and you eventually mm -hmm. like work up to like being able to you hack. Start off as B. <laughs> right. And then you can put skill points into becoming riff and then eventually <laughs> put skill points into becoming a real thief. Yes. 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, you just climb up this tech tree of unlocking locks that goes through the entirety of Bethesda's 3D um, uh, lock picking games. Lock picking. Yeah, <laughs> uh, this game this this game is not uh, shameful about borrowing mini games, right? <laughs> from things which I really appreciate, actually. Like yeah. I just like you know, and I don't know, I don't know what I did reinvent the wheel on this shit. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, you do all the Bethesda lock picking. Um, <laughs> but but yeah. but as you level up and get more skills and get better equipment, you start breaking into nicer houses, getting bigger scores. Um, additionally, what what's that? That have more security. Yes, cameras. Your houses are, are yeah much tougher. Yes, um, it, in kind of a weird, gross way that I didn't like that the, that those houses existed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fuck those guys. Yeah, I want to go in there and smash their toilets. Like the um, there is so I know this is not intentional, and somebody's gonna lose their fucking mind at the self parody about this. But yeah. like, there is if you wanted to make an unreadable article about this, you can make this as a commentary on how wealth brings security yeah you know and how unfair that is because the people you break into at first it is like you can see their destitution yes it is it is the easiest thing in the world it's the tutorial house but also they it just seems like an extremely sad life yeah like it it is a house that is so ramshackle that doesn't even make sense as a structure yeah Um, and when you open all the uh like when you open up the dressers and stuff like it's full of beer cans and things yep yeah it there there is you know if you wanted to (laughs) you could write an article that is pretty annoying yeah about how the the grander meaning of this i don't think there actually is that grander meaning but i noticed it because there's no war but class war right so (laughs) but yeah um, like you you start out like the like the same neighborhood goes you know your first neighborhood goes from that destitute place all the way up to like a pretty nice place with enough security that you have to like trip the power off to get inside mm-hmm. of it. Um, yep. And then like you go to like our Richie street or something like that, yep. which is just nothing but these heavily guarded compounds and people with guns and stuff. Like it's, it's real, yeah. over, it's real extra. Once people can start affording to um, higher security guards. Yeah. You know, the difficulty just goes up quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll talk about that. Like the kind of arc when we talk about how far we got in the game, because neither yeah. of us beat it. You can beat it. Yeah. Um, I watched the ending yesterday of this, which finishes the story, and you do a really tricky thing where you have to switch paintings hmm. in someone's houses. And then when you get there, your mob boss sends you a package, and the package is a bomb. They blow you up. Oh, nice. And the credits play over your your base being you know in flames, <laughs> um, which you know, cool. You yeah, know, like there, there's, we don't actually get a hint about Vinny or why he wants to do things, right? You know um so it's not really a story it's just kind of this general kind of goo it's like feels like a joke yeah yeah you know you've mastered this game there's really nothing else for you to do in it <laughs> until we patch in more content if you've done this extremely hard thing mm-hmm. at the hardest compound in the game yeah uh, stop playing right you know you've been yeah. blown up yep um but yeah like the game tutorializes you and you're you start out by you know lifting some real like small inconsequential stuff like you break into that destitute guy's place and you pick up his his pots toaster. and pans and his, his, his shitty toaster yeah his broken toaster his <laughs> pots and pans. like you're stealing you know the the markers of poverty yeah and that guy is like never home right you know um so you well, can work in five in. jobs just to afford yeah, that place just that toaster <laughs> just gotta get a five it's a five job toaster um it's <laughs> like a playstation 3 <laughs> like describing like like i always think about when you like that like a five dick mouth oh yeah like the idea of a five job toaster and then i just put a five dick toaster together in my head <laughs> <laughs> i mean like that they have those Those toasters that are just they have those toasters that are just for hot dogs yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> no i shouldn't have crossed Vinny. um so you, you go in there and then you uh the game is extremely open world they will tutorialize to kind of guide you mm-hmm. in things but you can break sequence whenever yeah. you want which i really love um as soon as you get the basic lock picks like you can jump a house yeah in the sequence and break into a nicer house to kind of jump start your xp track which we all talk about how you get xp and mm-hmm. what it judges that based on because i think it's actually kind of clever and good yeah um and then uh your economy your money economy because money is pretty tight actually in the beginning mm-hmm. and lock picks break and stuff you don't just buy one of these you want to have a few of them especially early on yes um so like the way so when you go into a house um after you broke into we'll talk about casing a house later yeah um, but yeah. these initial houses you don't really have to do that with um you steal things the first time you steal an object that's when you get the experience for it yes so Um, you bring that back the houses will kind of repopulate with items mm -hmm. 
But sure. this is cool because it you know it stops you it stops you from doing degenerate play by just going to the same easy to easy to hit house and yeah. stealing the same stuff over again. Um, you can do that for money, but you can't do it for XP. Right. You won't advance in the game because the things you can buy with money are tied to skills. They have skill minimums. Yeah. So even if you get the like fifty thousand dollars required to get the hacking laptop, you can't use that until another like six hours down the down the road. So right. there's no real point in grinding that up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so like quickly you start getting to houses that have people in them. Um, mm-hmm. and even when there are not people in the house, like people are walking around in these neighborhoods. Again, yeah. this is open world. You can see their sight cones. Um, and if you're doing weird stuff, they're going to like notice you. It tags you. You have like <laughs> right. a minute to kind of, you have a moment to stop. Yeah. Like, um, like doing something illegal, parks suspiciously, like crouching like in that. a weird place, crouching in a weird place. <laughs> like you can't just pull your, your hatchback up to the this window and then dump a, a painting into it yeah somebody will like, like notice it. yep and they'll call the police which we'll talk about that in a little minute yeah um so this is really tense like even when there's not somebody there it is tense to get into a house mm-hmm. early houses have fences um kind of places away from the street where you can get in mm-hmm. later houses protect those entrances that are off the street so the only way to get in is like on the street mm-hmm. so you have to you know hurriedly pick this lock between passing pedestrians yes which can be really tense and you're in a hurry because sometimes you are trying to game out the routines of the people inside yes like oh they're going to be home and i need as much time as possible to get what i want out of this and this is one of my favorite ways that the jankiness or the kind of simplicity of this payoff Mm -hmm. because i think that there's a version of this game where casing a house literally involves you with a notepad writing down people's hours too much too much i don't want to do that here you just click on them mm-hmm. and it just um if it, fill, it fills in their schedule in six hour blocks yep um so like all you really have to do is like come back to this house four times um yep. and try to notice a time when there will be a, as few people in the house as possible um or later on when they complicate the schedules and somebody's always home identify the time when that person is going to be as far away as, as far away as possible from where from you your need target. to from yeah, yeah from what you need to get yeah, yeah. Um, and then eventually you can buy mailbox cameras, which are a clever way to actually get someone's full schedule. Nice. Um, by by putting a mailbox camera in and then coming back a day later. And you can always um, – you can go sleep in your car. Mm-hmm. Like uh, I love the dedication to being a dirtbag in this fucking game. But like <laughs> yeah. you can go sleep in your car with the door open yeah. um, like a fucking dirtbag. Just camping. Uh, yeah, just camping. You know, um, And then you can come back and get the camera and get their, their full schedules. Um, you can also, once you, you can tag people and then once you tag them, you have limited ability to see them through walls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It does like an MGS five thing. Yeah. Yeah. doesn't make sense, but it's still very, very, you know, useful and, and, and kind of kind. Yeah. Um, once you get in like the experience of like, once you sneak, there's a, the music track that starts mm-hmm. in this game, I think is like really effective. Yep. Like it just sneak music. <laughs> 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 but i don't know like i'm in a mindset i'm simulating yeah. this like i'm I, yeah. I am you know i've got my i've got my thief's eyes on and i'm looking yeah. for light things that are high in value so i can get as big of a haul as possible and watching out for uh for people yeah you know who either to come home you're always watching that clock <clears throat> if you're doing it while someone's home you're always watching them out of the corner of your eye to make sure they don't get up and get like a beer or something mm-hmm. while you're in their kitchen stealing their better toaster <laughs> um, and it just feels awesome yeah like it's a really really tense feeling like there's something we talked about like way back in the maniac mansion episode about the feeling of like being somewhere you're not supposed to yeah being out of bounds that, that, it taps my like kid feeling uh-huh like oh i'm gonna get in trouble yeah it, it just know? it's not something that happens to you very much when you're an adult yeah you know yeah i very rarely get in trouble yeah, doubly so if you're a white adult. Like, I, I can walk wherever I want, and as long yeah. as I just act like I'm supposed to be there, nobody looks at nobody looks at I me could, aside. I could just go do this. Yeah, <laughs> this, this this could be real. And the worst thing that would happen is like a slap on the wrist, and a boils will be boys. Right, and right. then I'll be down shooting at the range with the the, the, the officers. Right, right. The next day, you know? So literally, I could do this. Right, there, right. There's a reason why the thief in Thief Simulator is a white dude. If they had <laughs> made it a black dude, I feel like that would have been it have been pretty listen, dark. Listen, Noble Muffins, you guys might be batting above your weight. <laughs> probably, 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 <laughs> probably like, taking some swings you can't, you, you, yeah. you can't hit. Yeah, I don't know that you can do that. <laughs> no. um, yeah. So it's, immense, it's immensely tense to do that. And there are hiding places mm-hmm. inside houses that are all pretty silly. <laughs> but um, you can have moments. And again, you have to round this up in your mind a little bit. But, okay, 
Um, I need to pick this safe that's in the bedroom. This person is, I don't know their schedule for this block. Right. I just, I know that they're going to be in the living room up until this point. I don't know where they go after that. You can be picking, uh, like cracking a safe, see them coming out of the corner of your eye, get in the closet, wait for them to come in, fiddle with a, you know, look out the window usually. Mm -hmm. They have very little animations and then leave and then like exhale and get <laughs> out of the closet and finish your thing. Yeah. Like um, it has that feeling of being right under their noses. That is just like really thrilling and good. Yeah. Um, the, the, the tension is always ratcheted up for me when you're trying to steal something big. Oh yeah. Like we should talk about that. Because yeah. <laughs> most things you can just put in your sack. You have a thief sack, which is part of your skill tree that you can upgrade the capacity for. Mm -hmm. And it also kind of ties into an appraise skill. You have an appraise skill that lets you see how much things are worth. Mm -hmm. um, but those just for pocket items, um, TVs, paintings, big art, later chairs and clocks and shit. printers, like, and <laughs> printers, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, big speakers and stuff you have to hold with your hands. You cannot put in a bag. Mm hmm. So not only do you have to get in and grab it, you have to get out and get it to your car, which, again, you can't just park in the backyard. No, and you cannot just be walking down the street holding a painting. People will get yes. nervous about it. So, yep. like, you know, you could just be escaping from the house and the yard by the skin of your teeth. And, like, what I would do is I would just, like, dump the thing over the fence. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> and then just and then come back for it later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then grab it and run. And we should say that the AI in this game is exceedingly stupid. Oh, yeah. Um, pedestrians will see you carrying a painting. If you drop it, they'll keep walking. Yeah. And then you pick it back up when they're not looking. Like, And the people inside the house will not notice that you've – they will notice theft. Mm -hmm. that's happened. Like if you unlock their door and get in and then they go to use the door, yeah, they'll notice it's been unlocked. Um, I, I I love that. I love how tense that gets too, because it does something that I like in stealth games, which is show you what the enemy can see. Yeah, so like yeah. you're, you're you know you're in there doing your doing your stuff trying to get out and then boop boop picture in picture then like yep. the, the then the the interface starts flashing as they like notice that you forgot to I don't know close this door or something yeah and like okay yeah. well I gotta I, I gotta gotta scurry yep that means it's time to go because the police are on their way yeah um but they're not you know they're not smart right you know in general um other than a couple of things like that so when you're sneaking those big objects back to your car um it's not actually that hard. Mm -hmm. Like one of the for the first half of this game, like I didn't beat this game, but the first maybe more than half, like the first two thirds of it, which is what I loved mm -hmm. and, and played through. It gives the illusion of being hard and being very tense and in, in spite of not being very difficult mm -hmm. in a way that's really valuable. Like when this game actually does kind of press, put the thumb screws on you and get really difficult, it loses a little bit. Yeah. And we'll talk about that as we talk about kind of more of the security systems and stuff that get into play. But early on when you're in this zone, there's this huge like middle third of the game mm -hmm. that is neither too easy nor too hard. That is sublime. Yes. Um, and that middle third is also accompanied by you kind of getting upgrades pretty mm -hmm. consistently. Like yep. part of what makes that later part a little bit of a bummer is that there is more space between meaningful gameplay changes. Yes. Um, and it feels like the the houses and jobs that you're doing are getting harder, uh, faster than you are able to faster than you are, are able to meet them by doing what the game tells you to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, and and you end up having to have this kind of like resource loop because as things the, the actual things you can buy mm -hmm. that go along with those later skills are extremely expensive. Yeah. Um, you know, that the fifty thousand dollar hacking laptop you know, is, is actually a thing, right? Like it's, it's very expensive. Um, yeah. So you, uh, you kind of go, you go through this middle third as you're, you're getting good upgrades at this point, um, being introduced through the tutorial, but also through just your own exploration, um, new ways to steal. <laughs> so starting out with like simple lock picks and then more complicated, and then eventually getting to like a glass cutter so you can get into windows and there's this feeling of like kind of playing chess with the neighborhood yeah or not chess like um like a, an arms race yeah you know when itchy and scratchy keep pulling out bigger guns <laughs> on each other yeah where it's like i have a glass cutter now now you guys have alarms for that and it's like well, okay um i can't use my glass cutter except for on certain windows like like oh you guys um you keep your bottom floor locked oh but i can climb trellises yeah oh but the second floor windows have shutters right so they're only open when we're home mm -hmm. you know things like that you kind of keep advancing up through that until you get more and more things and more things to steal so mm -hmm. like the safe cracking in this game is actually really good i enjoy it I quite a bit yeah. like like simula it simulates what it feels like to actually like listen you know crack a safe through like a stethoscope mm -hmm. you know 
Um, you can you can start cracking sh- safes. And as you're doing this, you're also advancing your ability to sell things. You mm-hmm. get the ability to wipe electronics. Um, you get the ability to uh, take apart jewelry mm-hmm. to sell it. Things like that. Yeah. Um, it's um, very fun. Like the loop of yeah. that is extremely good. Something something that I really wish was more developed as of right now is um, kind of the chop shop angle of it. It's it's you- it's really annoying. I I in my my canonical thief has a half taken apart car just up on on his little riser thing yeah up on his hydraulics that will just stay there forever because i'm never going to fucking finish dismantling that it's super not fun i I think it's super fun i like like i like looking for the screws and stuff it is it is you literally it is like a real-time car dismantling that to me seems Uh one-to-one with dismantling a car it it has all the parts yep um, and yeah. you have to find the screws and take them out in order. So you can't just take out like the crankshaft right? because the crankshaft is attached to the drive wheel uh-huh. and you can't take off the drive wheel because that's attached to the wheel well. Yeah. And the wheel well is attached to this and you have to find the, the end of the string. Right, right. And unscrew it. Yeah. Um, I, 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 did, I did not care. I, I really like untangling that. But the problem is there's I really like car mechanic simulator. <laughs> I know. Right. Uh, the, but the thing that I really wanted to, you know, to happen with that was like, okay, just, you know, that like that is another part of your business. It ends up mm-hmm. being incredibly lucrative for the time that you put into it. But there's like, I think five cars in the game that you can steal. Yeah. Um, and you can't actually sell the stuff directly. You have to sell it on eBay or whatever. Black Bay. Black Bay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's a, it's a little bit annoying that they don't have that. And that's something that I think that they would probably eventually, you know, um, add in. Yeah. Uh, um, Black Boy Bay. So you have a, uh, you have a laptop in your, in your base mm-hmm. um, or a computer rather as a couple different sites that are interesting. Um, Black Bay ends up allowing you to circumvent the pawn shop mm-hmm. that you can go to. Um, you can use the, uh, and the guy at the pawn shop looks like Russian or McDonald's, which I like. <laughs> Um, but he won't buy everything and he doesn't give the best prices for things. You can go on black Bay, which is like a black market eBay. Mm-hmm. And that will give you kind of little missions. Sometimes like somebody will want, um, like I want a guitar and a bass. Right. And then if you can get a guitar and a bass, you can sell them together for a higher price than you'd have individually. Mm-hmm. Um, there is thief tools.net or whatever. That's where your you store. Can buy. Yeah. That's your store. Um, uh, you, you thief tools, steal, steal your forum or something. <laughs> um, Yeah. Yeah. The uh, which is this forum that um, there's like or there's like two kinds of little forum things. There's a jo- one where you get jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, and <laughs> it's like so, rent a thug or something. Like right, that. There's rent a thug. Yeah, rent a thug, which gives you jobs, and right. these tend to be like specific little, you know, um, smash this person's toilet, um, which is really great. I, I love that. I love the, the 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 protection rabbit or the the protection racket sabotage that you yeah. have to do, especially when it's a story based thing. Yeah, those are great. Yeah. Um, and the uh, or it could just be like, you know, steal this specific object. Right. Um, from this person. And then there are there's intelligence you can buy. Yeah. Um, and this is like locations of loot. You can get people's schedules. Um, you can get uh, security flaws mm-hmm. that they have. Um, you can the thing that's cool is you can get all that stuff on your own as well. Yeah. You don't have to buy it. Um, mm-hmm. You can also just um, observe the people or just case their house really good. Yeah. Which involves you, the player, doing it, like walking around their house looking for weaknesses. Like, oh, like I see this now. Like this spot of fence is a little bit shorter. If I jump on this rock, I can jump over that. And there is a uh, a trellis I can climb to that second floor and I can see that windows open. Mm-hmm. Or you can buy that information. Yes. Um, the, the, the way that that information is kind of maintained and showed to you is actually really neat, I think, Mm -hmm. uh, which is, you know, like you do have, um, just a general menu that you can open up and, you know, look at all that. However, when you're on a piece of property or near it, um, it will actually just present everything that's relevant. So like everything you know, yeah, yeah. So So, what do I know about one Oh five? Here we go. Yeah. Here's the schedule. Here's, you know, here are the jobs that I have open for it. Like it'll put little Mm -hmm. waypoints on where stuff is like, is it like the interface is super well designed. (laughs) Yeah, it's actually, yeah, it's actually really, really good. Like very friendly. Um, so that's kind of the game. Um, but let's talk about uh, getting caught. Yes, uh, this passes the test, Gary. It is fun to get caught. It's super fun to get caught. <laughs> like it is silly because it is easy to get away usually, right? Um, but it is it is like extremely tense. Like you, um, you know, the first time I got caught was pretty early on because i didn't know how to play the game Mm -hmm. it was the first one where it's a back door and a window is open Mm. and i went to that window and i thought the person couldn't see me but i must have stood up for a second that they could see me yeah um and they started panicking it's before homeowners have guns um so and i was like you know without really thinking about it because the police were coming i was like 
fuck it. Like, instead of running away, I'm going to go into the house anyway. Mm -hmm. And I ran into their house and hid in their kid's room. (laughs) And you had to wait and, like, watch the cops kind of stomp around and not look like, like, Scooby, do you? (laughs) Like, not look under the bed until the cops just be like, it must have been your imagination this guy ran into your kid's room. I don't see a kid here. Um, you know, standing in the middle of the room. Can't, so, can't you people uh, take you the law up. into your own hands? <laughs> exactly. Like, the cops are not good in this game. Right. Um, you can get chased by them, though. Uh-huh. Like, you can literally be... Like, they have to be within a certain distance to pull a gun on you. Right. Um, so you can be out um, running from them, getting into your car, peeling out, and then running away from them. And once you leave town, you're golden. Right. Or leave the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's smooth sailing. So, like, I had moments like that, too, where it was just, like, a really tense, like, foot chase or car chase. Mm-hmm. Just for a second, like very, very briefly. Right. Uh, from that when I couldn't find a place to hide. Mm-hmm. Um, that was just like super fun. And some of those later things that when I poked in those compounds later, getting caught was necessary. Like getting caught and hiding. Like the only way I was able to make any headway into those big compounds was to get caught seen a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, hide and wait for the heat to pass. Yeah. And that just doesn't seem. It's not super great. Yeah. It, it, does, but... it doesn't stand up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, but it's um, fun. It, it's great. And, you know, it continuing the nonviolence of this game, if a guard or a person with a gun or a police officer is like, if they're able to shoot you, like if they get close enough to get a good shot, then it's just game over. Yeah. Um, additionally, it's game over if you like run over a pedestrian or something, which yeah. I which happened to me when I backed up, <laughs> I backed yeah. up without looking. I've done it before accidentally trying to get away from the police. Oh, yeah. Which is like a great like thing. Like, it's like, oh, shit. Well, that actually like, happens. Yeah. Yeah, that happened. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's just like, oh, man, you know, it just ends the game. It's not like you have to go to therapy. <laughs> right. <laughs> like that. But it is just, uh, you know, it's just like super fun. Another thing that I think is extremely like just fun that sounds boring that this game uh, simulates is that. Um, and this is also a weird thing. No one has kids in this game, which is right. probably good. So you can't run over kids or hit them in the head with a crowbar. Right. Um. <laughs> But there are lots of kids' rooms. Uh huh. So everyone, it's like this weird children of men situation. <laughs> it, it, that's where there are no children. Um, but the, one of the things I noticed fairly early on is the fact that um, if pe- people will never go into a children's room, it's never coded to be any of the the inhabitants' room. Oh yeah. So you can always hide out in a kid's room. <laughs> um, like they might go in there if they're chasing you or whatever, but they're not going to go in there as part of the routine. Right. Right. So there's so, a little, a little, uh, a little rest spot. So, like, doing these, once they start putting those window shutters in, um, you know, it's like, okay, well, I can't break into this at night because they they put the window shutters up. So I had to break in during broad daylight, like, sneaking past sidewalk people, the looky-loos, crawling into the back, finding the window that was the kids' room, like, looking into each window until I found one that had, like, you know, looked like a kids' room, cutting the glass, crawling in, and then hiding in a kid's closet until nightfall when the people Mm. went to sleep and then stole all their stuff while they were sleeping. (laughs) Yep. And then peeling out in their fucking garage, like stealing their truck and leaving through their garage. (laughs) Yep. Exceedingly fun. (laughs) Like, just like dream game shit. Yep. (laughs) Super, super good. I wish that car stealing, not just the the chop shop stuff, but car stealing was more robust in general. Yeah. Um, It, like, when it happens, it does a neat thing where you have to get a way out. Like, a lot of times these people have gates. Mm Mm-hmm. And you have to find the control for the gate. Yeah, those will um, those will sometimes be just like, um, you know, in, like in a place that's not in the garage. Yeah, yeah. like will be somewhere non obvious. But there's just only a few few cars, and they have this whole system for like hot wiring and getting past car alarms mm-hmm. and cloning keys. Yes. you can clone the uh, the little like dee dee mm-hmm. uh, keys yeah. and stuff. But there just aren't very many cars to steal. Yeah, that's and that's what makes it weird. Like the progression of like the arms race for stealing cars, it kind of tracks a little bit with the arms race for houses, but there are mm-hmm. just so many so many fewer cars that yeah. I have to wonder like a why it's in there um or b if like they have another plan for it because it's lucrative. Like you can make a ton of money when you do it, but mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um, let's talk a little bit about, so like, that's kind of the game. Let's talk about what they're planning to do and then kind of wish list. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little bit, I guess. So the things that they're going, so one, there is a VR version coming, which is like, you're locked <laughs> oh, in the shit. first person the whole time, which I think that sounds cool. Like I don't yeah. like VR, but that sounds tense and cool to me. Uh-huh. Um, the, uh, what they're planning to do is you steal all this stuff. They're going to give you a house to decorate, like using the same in- engine. Oh, animal crossing. <laughs> yep, you animal crossing with things you steal uh, from from uh, from the game, which I think is super cool. Uh-huh. Here's the amazing thing that I really want. 
Um, and they, they say they're going to do this. Who knows if they're going to have the budget for it? But the mm-hmm. game has actually sold really well. It was like the top seller on Steam for a few days. I, I mean, it was it was like, like a like a streaming phenom, right? Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, tons of like streaming yelling guys yeah, do yeah. this now. Um, and they want to make it so you can design a house in it and then challenge your friends to break into it online. Holy like, shit. You can upload a house and then like, I don't know if it'll actually, I don't think two players will ever exist on the same thing mm-hmm. it's just you design the houses and stuff and then you can upload them and you can be like you can be like hey cole like check out you know one two three cole street or whatever that right. i put up online and then you could then go through and see if you could break in <laughs> and you get kind of a report on like the security that i set up nice like mario maker style you know i don't know if you have to be able to break into it like mario maker that would be cool uh-huh. you can't just put like cameras everywhere right, right. um really fucking cool feature though mm-hmm that sounds awesome to me because designing the other half of this with like interesting patrol routes and things like that also sounds super cool to me. Yes. Like just setting up those routines. Like the, it seems like, you know, it would be pretty easy because just done by blocks, right? Like, Mm -hmm. okay. Like you're just, you know, for this hour, you'll be here for this hour. You'll be here. Like, it doesn't Mm -hmm. seem like it would take an awful lot of like interface know how to make that happen and to make something interesting off the back of it. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, it feels like it all and same thing with the house decorating thing. Yeah, like it's just them. I know this is not just them, right? Like right. this might be hard, but it's taking their tools and making a player facing version, which is something that uh, games do a lot. Yeah, you yeah. know, not saying it's easy, but it, it's something that's it's definitely heard of. Like it's fairly common. Yeah, I mean, they just t- take something like from you know destroy and build or whatever it is, and you know, here's your build. Yep. Just like they took the uh, the the car mechanic stuff, um, and, yeah. and, and ported it over to this. That sounds amazing to me, though. Yeah. That is what's going to get me to come back to it, <laughs> is uh, being able to like start designing houses and also start decorating my little thief place. I'm going to start a fresh save, yeah. and I want to have like a big row full of shitty broken toasters <laughs> um, until eventually, you know, I, I can have like a kind of a nice house. Yeah. And it'd be cool if like even in the single player, if your house was there were other thieves. Mm-hmm. I mean, like you can come home and find some of your st- shit stolen. Oh yeah, and you oh, had to like defend against AI thieves. That would be it's, really. Cool. It's like Mother Base. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Until eventually, you get rid of all the nukes. Yep. <laughs> Somehow. Somehow. We're, we're, steal all weird, the nukes. Weirdly. Yeah. yeah. No, that sounds that sounds fantastic to me. Um, <laughs> there, like there, there is certainly a uh, there there's certainly like a like a Sims appeal to this too a little bit even just in walking around and like looking at the buildings and the families and stuff like just it has a little bit of that to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. Um. Yeah, so I have no idea. What was there anything else you you said that they were going to add some other kind of motivation into it oh, for progression? Um, that, that's what I meant is the the decorating your house. That ah, was like de- your motivation yeah. for um for, for stealing cool stuff. Yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But my my wish list would be more management stuff. Um, mm-hmm. like just the the, the idea of the the idea of this being a simulator. You know, to to my mind, that implied there would be more of it. Uh, but I also understand that that's not every simulator. I just want more of an economic angle on this to give me more reason to go for bigger targets and stuff. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, ultimately, there's only so much you can do with the money and experience that you get off of the back of this, right? Yeah, like, it's a languid game. Yeah, you know, other than when it brief moments of intensity, but yeah. the rest of it you kind of take at your own pace. Yeah, yeah, and just like you know, it, but like you eventually just run out of stuff to get, you know. Mm-hmm. And and like I would like a little bit. Um, a little bit more interest, a little bit more action, like thing, you know, kind of propositions and what you decide to steal. Like now, um, stealing electronic, like phones and laptops and stuff that have to be wiped tend to be more expensive because you have to do this little um, mini game to wipe them. But once you have that mini game, doing it is really trivial. Yeah. You know, um, having a little bit more like what if there were things that had a certain amounts of heat tied to them? Mm. You know, like what if there was a thing where, and that wouldn't have to be, I don't need the police to come and arrest you because that's like end state. But what if it ended up being a thing where like um, once you achieve a certain amount of heat, like the neighborhood puts in a neighborhood watch. Oh, yeah. You know, and then um, vision cones are longer, (laughs) you know, just something, something like that. Like nothing too drastic or anything like that, but just kind of your actions having kind of an effect on a living neighborhood because as it is now. And again, this is the simplicity, which it does work in its favor, but to have kind of real staying power having the neighborhood have some kind of persistent effects, Mm -hmm. I think would rather than just being groundhog day every time you leave. Yes. Might be pretty cool. Like if I keep stealing from these people, they eventually do get a gun, Mm -hmm. you know? So that kind of encourages you to move on. And the other thing I need is more houses. Yes. Like a lot more houses, maybe more interesting, uh, you know, just kind of features with that stuff. Like what if, um, you know, 
there were basements mm -hmm. and stuff, and you could you could get in through a basement window, stuff like that. What if I had a grappling hook? What if you had a grappling hook? What if there were like a house where you know the way you get in is through the roof, mm -hmm. like there, it, it's next to a mountain, and you do this little jump <laughs> from this little cliffside onto the roof, and then you get in through the roof. But don't polish it like, too much, it. please. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it still needs to have the jank, but just like these are just ideas. <laughs> yeah, you know, off the hip. It also, did you notice this game takes place during Christmas? What? Like there are Christmas trees and Christmas gifts and in I, a lot of the houses. No, I didn't see. I didn't see any gifts or anything. Like I saw gifts um, uh, listed on Black Bay, but I never mm -hmm. saw any trees or anything. They're in there, huh? They're unless there's some kind of weird version thing. Like I got a different update, or uh, they patched them out or something. Maybe maybe you, play, maybe you played it. You, you were playing this a lot in December. Yeah, I wonder. It'd be if weird it, if they took them out though. Yeah. Um, but there were like Christmas gifts and stuff. So that was also added this level of like, I can break into the poor people's houses very easily and yeah. steal, literally steal the gifts for little Bart and little Lisa. <laughs> and then oh, the yellow little, sweater. Maggie, little Homer, yeah, <laughs> the sausage for little Homer. And then, and then we, we, you know, leave and where's the rich people got to protect their Christmas trees. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would like also, I mean, I guess just while I'm on Santa's lap for thief simulator stuff, an expansion to the vandalism kind of arsony stuff you can do yes you know like what if it was like set fire to the shed mm -hmm. you know things like that because that's definitely going to call attention yeah you know as of now when they say like hey break a window um you can do that from a distance you can level up your athletics to throw bricks right i, I feel like um, i can throw a brick okay <laughs> yeah you, it doesn't take that much xp to throw a brick but here, right. here you know here, this guy was in his muscles atrophied in prison most guys lift weights <laughs> <laughs> He just like he was, took a bath. He, he was a library. He was a library yeah. prisoner. Yep. Yeah. Um, so the uh, but more kind of things like that, like more varied goals, would also be super cool. Yeah. Yep. So God, I love this game, Gary. I, I like, super good. And just like you know, it, anything in this blank simulator kind of vein, like I forget that I love them as much as I do until one catches on. Mm -hmm. Like you know, I fell into a house flipper hole. Uh, American Truck Simulator. I knew that was too dangerous for me when we did the yeah. epic suffering about it. <laughs> that game's good though. I haven't played House Flipper yet, but it's on my list. Yeah, um, like House Flipper is really good because the upgrades in it are super meaningful for your efficiency. So mm -hmm. like stuff that is a real pain at the beginning ends up being a lot easier to do, and you can start focus on like meeting the client's demands and stuff. Like they're like they're mm -hmm. that that game has a really good progression arc to it. It's such a weird little subgenre mm -hmm. of things where, like, it is really something where the more polish, the, you know, the kind of worse it is, mm -hmm. you know, like a very polished version would not work. You need a degree of jank. Um, and they end up being, at their best, they're all about that middle loop. Yes. You know, that middle third where it's like you're hitting that sweet spot. But no, uh, no game I've played has been able to stay there. Right. You know, they all have kind of an annoying beginning and they all have an annoying end game. Like it's a it's a it's a genre that has not perfected the beginning or end. Yeah. Um, but because of that, and I don't know, maybe maybe because they feel disposable to me, I feel perfectly fine about cutting bait and saying, yep, I stopped when that game was oh, totally I stopped when that game stopped being fun. I Yeah, I have eight hours of of Thief Simulator and I stopped. Yeah. Until they add more content uh, to it. And that's fine for me. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah, I agree. Like it is, uh, the, the kind of the modesty of it serves in all ways. They're also cheap. Like it's like 20 bucks, Yeah, you know, which is not nothing. We're not here to tell you what 20 bucks is worth to you, but it's not, if this were a $60 game, I might still be okay with it. Cause I like this game a lot, right. but I'm really, really happy that it was, it's 20 bucks and, yeah. and you know, I got it on sale for probably, you know, 15. Yeah. 20 bucks feels like a, an extremely good sweet spot for, I feel like I'm getting my money's worth. But also it's high enough that I feel like I am appreciably supporting this developer. Mm -hmm. Right. Like if this if this was like six dollars, they'd be like, wow, this is this is really good for the money. But like, how are you going to make more of it, please? Yeah. Yeah. I want these guys to, to make yeah. their money yeah. very much. So good shit. Extremely good. Thank you for uh, thank you for pushing me into playing it. No problem. Yeah. Love it. It is. Uh, it is. The best, and I'm looking forward to those expansions. They haven't updated since January, so I'm, like, a little worried, Yeah, you know, that, like, maybe they'll just run out of Steam, which happens. Like, yeah, yeah. developers get bored, and then they stop supporting the one product they have because there's not an immediate, you know, money right, aspect right. to that. Like, that might bring in more people, but really it's just giving more to people who already 
pay them. Yeah. You know, but I would do a paid expansion of this if it was significant. Oh, yeah. Like I would pay five to ten dollars for more content of this, and this could be like a living game for me, and I would be a okay. Yep. So incredibly good, um, incredibly funny. Yep, fun and good. Yeah. Fun, funny, and good. Um, if you uh you know, if you're listening to this, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Thanks for for supporting us. Um, you know, at the, at this level, we really do appreciate it. Um, you know, there's no way like I reading and reviewing Duckfeed Presents won't help because that's no <laughs> right. longer on the public feed. Right. Um, so just know that we uh, we yeah. thank you. Yeah. Um, you can let us know directly, like if you liked this and if you want to see more stuff like it, um, mm-hmm. you know, comment on Patreon uh, or just, you know, hit us up in the usual places. We like having feedback, um, especially in something that is not going to as many people. Um, mm-hmm. To my mind, what's important is that we're giving you stuff that you like. Yes. Like the, the whole idea behind... Dark feed presents is that like to do things that are a little bit more tossed off, require a little bit less prep, mm-hmm. but still make people feel like they're getting yeah. good value. So it's not useful. You know, it's not something we don't want to do if people don't like it. Right. Right. So let us know if you like it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And also, you know, if you, if you're just like, Oh, I just don't have time to listen to it and stuff like that. Like that's, that's not necessarily what we're looking for in terms of feedback, mm-hmm. you know, just because it's not like, if it's like, well, I won't listen to any of those things. Yeah. Yeah. That's not really helpful like it was more helpful to be like no you know this was all right i wish that instead this had happened yeah you know would be useful or just kind of like yeah like i didn't didn't sound like it you know super good Mm -hmm. but if you like it let us know yeah anywho um yeah thanks uh thanks for supporting us thank you very much uh we'll see you next time whenever one of these drops umbasa umbasa